there, it's Sandy Alnock, Bible Journaler here on YouTube, and today I'm going to do a rather vintage, splashy kind of page. This was inspired by a little study I was doing in Second Peter. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And it's a beautiful verse. I already have something on this page, but I do have room up there. I could do it there, but I decided I wanted to do a tip in. So I'm going to do it on some Tomo River paper and use these Master's Touch watercolors. I bought them just as a set to have out at a Bible study that I taught. Haven't used them. I did a little testing with them just to make sure they were tolerable for watercolors. You know me. I love the Daniel Smith that I normally use. But this has a bunch of things in it. It's got a sponge, a pencil sharpener and an eraser, a couple of sticks of graphite, and some brushes that I don't find particularly useful because I do bigger, splashier things, but they do come with two brushes. And the brushes that I'm going to be using, or the, the brush, shall I say, is the one on the left, which is a master's touch brush. And it's a number 12. You see, it compares in size to my normal number 12, much smaller. But it is a softer brush in some ways, so you might find it useful. And these are the the brushes that are branded for Hobby Lobby, and they're relatively inexpensive. I've seen them on sale a bunch of times over there, so those are reasonable brushes for Bible journaling. I don't use them for my fine art at all, but for Bible journaling, they're just great. What I decided to do was start out with some vintage kind of colors, so I started out with that kind of yellow ochre color and the brown color, and moved the paints over to the left because People always tell me, if you're right-handed, your paint should be on the right, so you have easy access to them, and I find that I lay my hand in them if I have them on the right. So I usually have my paints on the left and my water on the right. So there you go. I've already drawn in some circles using some things I'm going to be using as a template and created them in like just three circles that are overlaying each other. And in a few spots, not everywhere, I created almost a a little bit of an outline around them, and I'll keep doing that a little bit more throughout this. So you'll start to see these three circles emerge because I wanted them to feel like they were intertwined with each other, but also keep it loose and splashy. If I were to just draw these in a big old heavy pen, that might work, but it also isn't going to give me that feeling of these kind of really soft and vintage looking circles. So around one of them, I painted just the bottom portion of it and then let the top get splashy and disappear into the brown paint and created just a, a few strokes around those two on the bottom. So they just start to look like they are intertwined. And I'll do some layering and stuff over top of it as I always do because that's how I roll. Uh, do some splashing, etc. And one of the nice things about the Tomo River paper is that you can use a hairdryer or heat gun like I've got to dry the paper and then you don't really need to iron very much because it you know dries nicely that way. I don't tend to use the heat gun in my Bible because it'll warp the entire bunch of pages behind it. So that is one really good reason for using this paper. But what I did was take a pile or a puddle, I guess you'd call it, of black paint and took each one of these three circles that I had traced and laid it down, and sometimes I spun them, sometimes I just tapped them. And the bottom of this glass had, had me particularly interested because it has this little texture around it. It's like little dots on the bottom of it. And I thought that would make for a really interesting kind of circle. So look at the glasses you have in your house, candles, just different things with different outlines on them, and see if you can create something. So then I'll do the next one is with the top of the same glass. And just turn it a little bit, because sometimes that will spread the color a little bit. But since this is watercolor, it's a little difficult to pick up the paint. If you were to do this in, say, acrylics or something, and put a big puddle of wet acrylic out there, it would work much better. You'd have a really strong line. But I like the fact that this is a soft watercolor line as well. So next up is to add some other design elements to this, because I didn't want it to be just that. So I'm going to use a couple of the other colors in the set and make some just graphical things like stripes and dots and swooshes and stuff. No real rhyme or reason to it. I just wanted something, I guess, linear on here. 
to balance out all of this loose craziness that I've got going. And, you know, doing some things where like this green is going to go across that dark blue color, that sort of thing. One thing I noticed that this didn't have a purple in it. So I will be using a purple later, but I have to mix my own. So if you get a set like this and you're a purple lover, you might want to look for a set that has purple in it because this set doesn't come with one. So in the center of one of the circles, I decided to put a heart. And then I, um, you can do all different kinds of things depending on what sort of verse you're going to use for something like this. You could create a design like this with uh, turn these into flowers. Every one of these circles could be flowers instead if you want. You know, lots of different ways you can do it. But I'm making clocks because the verse is about time and, you know, God having, he's no respecter of time. He thinks a thousand years are a day and a day is a thousand years and it's all good with him. And I want to lean in and trust him for that. In the season that we're in, if you're watching this later, we are still in pandemic mode in the United States of America. It seems to be going on forever. And I find myself crying out to the Lord and like, can you just fix this, God? Just fix this. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of waiting for whatever's going to happen. And for him, it's not a big deal. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's using this time as he'll use it. And it's not up to me to whine about it. So that is where my my being caught on this verse when I was reading Second Peter came in. So here's where I'm mixing my purple, a little bit of red and a little bit of blue to make a purple for a cross. And, you know, after that, it's just a matter in this design of including a couple of the other colors in a few other places. Uh, that top little stripe that I had done, I didn't want to go all the way to the top with a big line. So instead, I just took some of the colors that were already there and made it a broken line going up to the top section. A page like this, you could do a little bit of journaling, or you could take a pencil and just journal out the entire page, which would be absolutely gorgeous. All the white space behind it and just journal, journal, journal. I'm going to add some journaling in pen in just a little bit here. But I wanted to put a little bit more color in here. I'm layering over some of the colors that I've already used in the painting. And I'm outlining just a few sections, not everywhere. And I'm doing them really softly and using water to blend them into the background so that it just looks like a little soft shadow in a color instead of being anything too crazy. That big line was bothering me. So I debated whether to use some white pen to break it up. But instead, I decided to take some green and make a little design within it, and then dried it all up again so that I could get out a pen and write the verse around the circles. And I drew two lines so I would get these straight to write my commitment to the Lord that I can wait. I don't need to rush ahead of God. It's This is all in his timing, and whatever he wants to do, I am I am there for it. It might be hard, but I can wait, and I want I want him to know that. I want to put that in my Bible. So some people have asked me recently about my corner rounder. This is a giant corner rounder. It's got a quarter inch and a half inch thingy on it, and it's expensive if you're getting it just for doing this kind of project. If you're doing a lot of other crafts you might want to round corners for, it's a great tool, easy to squeeze, but there are also little tiny, little tiny punch type ones that will do corner rounding. Or you can just take a pair of scissors and round it to match your Bible, because different Bibles will have different types of rounding. Uh, the backs of these tippins, by the way, are a great opportunity to study the verses on the other side. So you now have a big blank place where you can actually do more Bible journaling. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, try it out yourself. Share it in our Bible journaling Facebook group and share it with your friends as well, so they can maybe consider what God's sense of time is versus ours. Think about that. All right. I will see you guys next week. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.